Welcome friends to Muskrat Links. Today we've got a super fun episode I am very excited to film. We are going to be pitting the Pro V1 Left Dash against the Bridgestone BRX. This is going to be both urethane covered balls, one on the very firm side, one on the very soft side, and we're going to see how they perform against each other. This actually came from a comment that my dad left on one of my previous videos. So if you guys have cool tests you want to see me perform here on the Muskrat Link Simulator, make sure to leave me a comment down below with those ideas. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of cool content here on the Muskrat Link channel that you can't get anywhere else. So let's talk about what this test is gonna look like. Here are the balls we're gonna be using today, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Pro V1X Left Dash and the Bridgestone Tour BRX. So really the question we are looking to answer today is, does compression matter for balls that are the same style, same cover? It's a question that's been kind of pervasive throughout golf for a long time now. Can you actually feel the difference between these balls? I don't know. I'm more of a data-driven golfer myself. I don't care what ball I'm playing. I don't really care how it feels either. But if it does what I want it to do and the numbers look good, that's all I care about. So we're gonna do our test today. We're gonna use the driver, the seven iron, and the 56 degree wedge to see you know, how these balls perform against each other. Is the left dash gonna be longer because it's harder? And is the Bridgestone going to feel better or have more spin because it's softer? We're gonna find out. This is gonna be exciting. And before we jump in, I also wanna talk a little bit about compression and kind of demystify it a little bit because what does it really mean? Okay, this is an important topic, guys, because it's really hard to find a good definition of compression because every golf ball manufacturer can use a different standard for what they call an 80 or a 90 compression. And throughout the years, it's changed quite a bit. So here's what we're kind of looking at for like current day compression measurements. And I'm gonna read this off my phone so I get it right for you guys, okay? Compression is a measure of a golf ball's foot pound resistance pressure to compressive stresses or in other words, the degree to which a golf ball shape changes when subjected to a compressive load. In the golf ball industry, compression is rated on a scale of zero, the softest, to 200, the hardest, where each point represents one one thousandth of an inch deflection in a ball under a load applied by a standard weight. So basically, they smoosh a ball down with a standard weight and the amount at which that golf ball kind of squishes out under load is kind of the compression that we're looking at here. And it's at extremely, extremely small measurements. A rating of 200 indicates that a ball does not compress at all, whereas a rating of zero indicates a deflection of two tenths of an inch or more. So it either sits there and doesn't do anything, it's basically a diamond, or if it has a compression of zero, it gets squished all the way down like a pancake and gets splatted way out. Makes sense, right? Hopefully. So the golf balls that we're gonna be using today have a compression rating of just over 100 for the Pro V1 Left Dash and just over 70 for the Bridgestone BRX. So there's about 30 points of compression difference between them. Can we feel that difference? And does the data show anything about that difference? That's the question we're gonna to answer today. Let's go. All right, first up on the test, we have the left dash with the 56 degree wedge. We're gonna take eight shots with each ball on each club going up the scales, kind of like we did before. And then afterwards, we're gonna review all those numbers and see how they performed compared directly against each other. Let's go. I pretty much know what to expect here with this left dash. Should be about, I don't know, first shot of the day, maybe 85, 90 yards carry, something like that with about 10,500 backspin, maybe more, we'll see. Beautiful looking first shot right down the pipe. What do we get? 96 yards carry, 100 yards total with 10,000 backspin almost right on the dot. That's a pretty good first shot. I pulled it a little bit so it cut down some of those spin numbers, but let's get shot number two in the books here and see how we do. All right, shot two. Let's see if we can duplicate that result. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That's kind of exactly what I expected out of my swing there. 92 carry, 96 total. 10,600 on the backspin. Let's hit one more here to show you guys to kind of get a baseline for all these numbers and then we'll cut right to the end. All right, Mr. Left Dash, shot number three. Another one looking pretty good, starting in a little left, coming back a little right. Boom, 91 carry, 95 total, 10,000 RPMs on the backspin. Pretty much ideal. All right, I'll see you guys at the end when we're swapping over to the Bridgestone. 
Tor BRX up here next. I guess I am a little bit interested to see if this feels any softer, having just hit eight of the hardest ball you can buy essentially on the market. So we'll see if I can even notice anything here, but apparently it could all be in my head too, because you never know. Maybe, it kind of felt a little heavier almost when I hit it, kind of more of a thump, I guess. 87 carry, 91 yards, 9,200 backspin. Hmm, I don't really know if there's anything there yet. Let's see. Shot number two. Do we feel any of the same things that we had on shot number one? Let's see. If anything, I think maybe it sounds a little different. I don't know if I could potentially feel that in the club or not. But that's another really well-struck ball, and it's going a little bit shorter. 9,900 on the backspin as well, so... Maybe there's something in it for the distance. We'll see as the data progresses on here. Shot number three. Will our trends continue here with the Bridgestone? Caught that one really nicely, just like the other ones. Pulled it a hair, but that's going to give it a little bit more distance than we had previously. 97 out to 102 with 9,200 on the backspin. So definitely not spinning as much as the left dash. But again, we'll hit the rest of these and we'll catch you guys at the end. Last one up here with the Tor BRX. We've got a pretty nice pattern here going. Let's see if we can continue that with this last ball. Yep, looking pretty good there as well. Maybe a little heavy, it's slightly shorter, but I mean, it's right on the line. You really can't complain. 9,200 backspin. All right, that's gonna bring us up to the seven iron. See if I can feel the difference here. And you guys know how we do it here on Muskrat Links. We're changing up the order here, going back to the Bridgestone first here. So we change which ball ends up leading off. So there's not any tendency of hitting one ball first. Seven iron, Bridgestone, BRX up here, eight shots. Let's see how the first one does. Don't shank it. Yep, that's a pretty good seven iron right out of the gate there. We love to see that right down the pipe. 165 carry out to 178. That's a really nice seven iron. Shot two, here we go. Copy paste. Looking good. Definitely pulled this one a little left with not quite the fade we like to see, but numbers are perfect. 161 out to 175. 4,600 backspin. Shot number three. Actually, I won't make you guys watch too many more here. I'll just let you guys jump in at the end when we get to the eighth shot. All right, last shot with the Bridgestone is looking good. Heading down the pipe, coming back a little bit to the right. Out there at the perfect distance, same as all the other ones. 5,100 backspin. Okay, let's swap to the left dash and see how he does. All right, left dash coming back in. Will I notice any differences right off the bat just hitting this thing? I don't know, but we'll see. Again, if anything, maybe it's just the sound. It sounds a little sharper than the Bridgestone, but I mean, the performance is looking basically identical from that chop up. We'll see how it does over eight. Shot numero dos. All right, number two heading down range. Not bad, a little shorter perhaps than the other ones. Kind of got it a little heavy, but he's within the data set. Okay, last up with the left dash here. I will say one thing, throughout this I had a couple miss hits, and the miss hits maybe hurt more on the left dash. Maybe it's in my head, but it just feels like because I'm thinking about that ball being harder, and if I don't quite catch it perfectly on the club face, it feels like it hurts more, but I'm pretty sure any golf ball is going to do that to you. So, all right, let's hit this last one now and get it right down the pipe. Well, no miss hit there, that's for sure. That is a nice, pure shot. Heading right down there, flying, nestling in with all of his friends. Okay, let's amp things up to the driver now. This is gonna be fun and really see if there's any difference in these balls. I've been wanting to do a test like this for a while now. Let's see what arguably the hardest ball in golf does compared to one of the softer urethane covered offerings. We're gonna probably take four, again, like fairway finder type drives and then four ones where we really go for it just to kind of give a little bit of, uh, a little bit of spice in the data, shall we say. All right, first one. Looking good, sailing down the middle, coming back to the right perfectly. 251 carry out to 275. 2,700 backspin. I mean, that's my drive in a nutshell there. 150 ball speed. Didn't quite catch it perfectly, but hey, the numbers don't lie. Number two of the fairway finders. Pretty good one there. Not quite coming back. It's going to be very low spinny, that's for sure. Going to get some run out on that one. Yeah, 2,300 backspin in 11 degree launch angle. I want to get that up a little bit higher, but I'll see you guys when I'm swinging hard. Well, we got a hold of that one, that's for sure, but it is heading out to the left. 
255 carry out to 284. Very little backspin. If we could straighten that out and maybe hit the center of the club face, that'd be great. All right, last one with this driver. Let's see if we can pipe one for the culture. Come on, give us one of them big numbers. That's what we want to see. <laughs> Try my best, everybody. That's heading down there, that's for sure. Go, 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 go. Eh, it's more of the same. Pulled the couple there, that's for sure. But let's move on to the Bridgestone and see how it compares. Bridgestone up here. Let's get some down the fairway, establish our baseline, and then really open up on them. Ooh, kind of a bullet there. Not really coming back at all. It's going to have some run on it. Go, 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 go. 263. Good spin numbers, bad launch angle. All right, let's dial this in. All right, let's hit this fairway. Let's start it right on the same line as we put that first one, but let it fade back. Come on now. That should be good. Pretty much the same as the first one. Not fading back quite as much, but hey, that is almost identical to that first one, so we will take that. Just got to get that launch angle up a little higher, maybe. There we go. That's a nice one to end off at. Good launch angle. Carrying out there to 254, rolling out to 278. Right in there with the Titleist, what can I say? All right, let's try to swing a little bit bigger, see if we can pump these last four a little deeper. There we go, that one is heading down there, got the center of the face on that one. Let's see where she ends up. Not the greatest launch angle, I would say. Yeah, not really any further, 277, 12 degrees. I'd like to get that up a little bit more. Well, we put a good power charge into that one, out to 285, 2200. Now we've got some data to analyze. I'm going to go ahead and swap over and get into this computer and we'll take a look together. Here are the numbers, guys. Let's go through and take a look at them. I've also turned on the little magnifier here, so hopefully you can kind of see the numbers a little better as we're talking about them. So left dash up first here with the 56 degree. We average, let's see what we got here, 10,200 backspin on this with a launch angle of 31.3 degrees. What else we got here? Carry yardages of about 92 with a total of about 96. All right, let's see how that compares to the RBX. And since we only have eight now, you can kind of see the results from this and this at the same time. So right off the bat, we can see that the RBX spun about eh, 800 RPMs less. It's notable, I'd say, probably just outside of that range of being able to be explained by only hitting eight shots. So spinning less, launching slightly higher, carrying 93, rolling out to 98. Very similar distances, that's for sure. I guess the spin is something to consider though. So, all right, on to the seven irons. RBX up first here with the seven iron. We had 5,400 backspin with a launch angle of 21.5, 160 carry out to 172. If we compare that down to the left dash, the very firm ball, 5,600 backspin. So that is essentially the same, maybe a little bit less on the RBX with 19.8 degree launch angle, a little bit lower, 157 carry, a little bit less, with a little bit less roll out as a result. Where's ball speed on this too? I wanna to start taking a look at that. Oh, ball speed is the first one here. So we got 111 to 111, so basically the exact same across all those shots. Well, let's go down to the drivers and see if we can spot any differences. First up, we have the left dash. 2400 backspin, that is really good for me. 152 ball speed. And I'm kind of coming off of a little bit of a sickness, so this is lower than it normally is for me. 251 carry out to 278 with a launch angle of 12.4. And we compare that to the 30 point softer BRX. We have almost identical ball spin. Speed was a little bit less, which is kind of what we expected with a softer ball. But again, it's kind of within that does it really matter category for numbers. Carried 246, ended up 274 with a launch angle of 12.3. So very similar launch angles overall, very similar spin. This ball was a little bit slower and obviously it went a little bit less as a result. So let's talk about what this means overall and close out this video. Well guys, there you have it. That is the data for the Pro V1 Left Dash versus the Bridgestone BRX. Is that right? Yeah, Bridgestone BRX, very, very similar. I would say today, it didn't make a difference at all. Eight shots on the simulator with all those clubs, didn't make a difference to me really. The numbers were pretty much identical across the board. Maybe the BRX was a little bit lower spinning and a little bit slower, but I don't think that really makes a difference today. 
if I took this out on the course and maybe I felt a little better, you know, maybe there's more of a difference there. I'd like to conduct this test again, and I definitely want to conduct this test with a Pro V1 left dash versus a really soft ionomer cover ball as well. That difference is going to be big in the compression. But for today's video, draw your own conclusions. Make sure to subscribe to Muskrat Links. We've got tons of cool content here on the channel and more to come in the upcoming weeks. I think that's going to be it for me. Have fun out there, everyone.